Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Hawaii Virtual College Fair. As you're filing in, I'll take a moment to thank you for, for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Specific questions about the institutions you're hearing about are certainly appropriate, or broader ones that you'd like many of our panelists to weigh, on, weigh in on, we'll take at the end of the, the session. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening this afternoon, so certainly feel free to sign up for additional sessions at the same website where you submitted your registration for this one. Also on that same website will be uh, recordings of all presentations, including this one, in about a week's time. Without further ado, I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, and we will start off with Reed College. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. My name is Grace Fisher, and I am an Associate Dean of Admission at Reed College in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Um, we are a college that is both in the city itself, but we have um, nature all around us and running through our campus. As you can see behind me, this is a shot of our canyon, which is a restored natural wildlife habitat. Um, we're a small uh, liberal arts and sciences college, 1,500 students, 160 faculty, so better than 10 to 1 ratio. Um, and the real heart of Reed is that students come here seeking intellectual community, by which I mean students come to Reed because they love learning and they want to be around other students who love learning as much as they do. We're really excited to carry out conversations in the classroom and outside of it. Um, they connect around ideas and they connect around the things they're passionate about. Um, that said, Reedies take ideas seriously perhaps, but they don't take themselves too seriously. There's a strong sense of uh, sort of bucking tradition in a lot of different ways. And they're the type to have a sense of play with what they're learning. You know, you're using statistical methodology in class to figure out how many trees are in Alaska. And then you might be also using it to try to figure out with your friends who's going to win The Bachelor. So that sense of playfulness and sort of joy around ideas is a, a particularly reedy trait. Um, and the educational style and the curriculum at Reed are really set up to maximize that feeling. Um, this environment of sort of radical egalitarianism and, and intellectual inquiry. Um, more examples than I have time for, but I think some of the highlights, um, first of all, we all go by first names. Um, we are not interested in traditional classroom hierarchy. We don't think it serves our students. So your professors are Pancho and Kara, not Dr. Savory or Professor Servini. That just feels different um, from the beginning of your time at Reed. Um, at Reed, you earn grades and have a traditional college transcript, but you don't see your grades in your day-to-day -day life unless you ask to. Instead, all of your learning is, um, all of your work receives deep, in-depth um, um, written feedback. So you're getting away from the kind of high school mindset um, that is so common of, all right, I need to get a 93 on this to keep my A in this class and things like that, that, that kind of running total. And instead focusing on, did I adequately you know, explore this idea? Do I feel like I practiced this skill? Do I feel like I proved my point? Um, that feels different. That changes how you interact with your work. It changes how you interact with the people around you because um, you're not thinking about your own grades. You're not thinking about theirs either. Um, finally, you're an active participant in your education at Reed. Um, colleges, and I think that'll be true for all the colleges you're hearing from today, um, you're not in college just to absorb facts, although that's part of the learning process, right? But um, what we're gonna teach you at Reed is not just how to learn facts, but how to use them, how to uh, take in information and use that information as a springboard to create new knowledge and create new meaning. Basically, you're going to learn how to do research or creative work. And in your senior year at Reed, every single student will actually have a year-long one-on-one class with a professor where you um, carry out a research or creative project. Um, we call that your senior thesis. So you actually end your time at Reed um, writing a small but not insignificant book that goes into our library for the rest of time. Um, beyond the academic environment, um, which is certainly a huge draw for students, um, the other thing to know about Reed is that um, in terms of how students relate to each other, 
we operate on an honor principle, uh, which is actually not a written set of rules, but rather a shared idea, a shared commitment to doing right by one another um, and students being given the power to govern themselves and decide how the college works and what activities exist and how the college uses its money for student activities. And so students at Reed really make Reed what they want it to be. Um, we also uh, have always been a school really de dedicated to inclusivity, both in the sense of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, but also um, in the way we operate our student groups. Every student group at Reed is open to anyone who wishes to join. Um, so we have no fraternities and sororities. We have no NCAA varsity sports. Um, if you are intrigued, if you want to uh, learn more, if you want to maybe get uh, be a part of this, the things to know about admission this year, um, we've never had an application fee, so you don't have to worry about that. And we are test blind. So we were actually not using test scores in our evaluation um, this year of candidates. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you have them, whether or not you think they're good enough. We simply won't be using them. And I'll end by sharing a fun fact, which is that we uh, have a nuclear reactor on campus that any student can become certified to operate. Um, and it's the only one in the world operated primarily by undergraduates. So with that, I will pass it on to Pomona. Great, thank you so much, Grace. And as you mentioned, up next is Pomona College. All right, thank you so very much. I'm very happy uh, to share my screen here and uh, move you through a few slides in my six minutes. Uh, let's see if everyone can see that. Uh, my name is Adam Sapp. I am the Director of Admission at Pomona College. Pomona is one of the Claremont Colleges. We happen to have three Claremont Colleges in today's program. So I am going to give a little bit of an overview of the Claremont system. We're located in Southern California, about 35 miles east of Los Angeles. Uh, that's about an hour from Santa Monica, an hour from the beaches of Orange County, a couple hours from San Diego. And we are, as you can see there from the map, often called the five C's. Uh, the Claremont Colleges are a consortium of schools. Pomona is the oldest of the Claremont Colleges, founded in 1887, but each college was subsequently, that was subsequently founded after Pomona uh, was founded and really reflects the time period in which it was founded. I won't go too deeply into each school other than just to sort of reference them because we do have admissions officers from a few of the schools here today. But Scripps College was the second college founded in Claremont, founded in the 1920s. Uh, Scripps is a women's college. It was founded in the age of suffrage and so that seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, the third college founded was Claremont McKenna College, founded in the middle of the 1940s to educate returning GIs from World War II. Today, Claremont McKenna is a liberal arts college with a slight curricular emphasis in economics, politics, and international relations, which uh, certainly makes sense when connected to its founding. Harvey Mudd, the fourth institution, was founded at the height of the space race. And as you can imagine, that means science and technology. Uh, and we'll learn a little bit more about Harvey Mudd today, but that is uh, very much a cornerstone of the life at Harvey Mudd is the STEM life. And then finally, Pitzer College, founded in the 1960s in this age of social justice and societal upheaval and the questioning of many societal and social norms. Uh, and we'll learn a little bit more about Pitzer College and how it carries out that mission uh, even more broadly uh, to this day. The Claremont Colleges operate on one simple premise. You attend one school, but you can take classes at any of the schools, and you live at one school, but you can participate in extracurricular activities at any of the schools. Each of us are independent in our administration, but we collaborate on classes. And so we have 6,000 students at the Claremont Colleges, 2,500 courses at the Claremont Colleges, 17 dining halls. Your dining hall card gets you into any uh, of the eateries at the Claremont Colleges, and lots and lots of other features, which I won't go into today, uh, but they include joint majors, joint programs, uh, and lots of lectures and, and shared resources. Uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about Pomona College. As I said earlier, we were founded in 1887. We have 1,655 students on campus uh, today. We have about 48 majors. Those majors are divided into the arts and humanities, the social sciences, the natural sciences, 
and what we call ID or interdisciplinary majors. We have one of the highest gra four year graduation rates in the country and we're really proud of our incredibly diverse student body. In this year's class 55% of students at Pomona identified as domestic students of color and as a student body students come from all 50 states Puerto Rico, uh, Guam and the Virgin Islands and 60 different countries. We're about 13% international at Pomona. Internships, as you can imagine, uh, at all of the Claremont colleges are a big deal, but our proximity to Los Angeles and being in a really large urban space where there's lots of access to Fortune 500 companies and corporations, that's a big deal. Certainly true at Pomona, 40% of sophomores do an internship in LA. And true to form, as a liberal arts college, we value small classes with an average class size of 15 and a student to faculty ratio of eight to one. It's a little about the place. Now I want to tell you about the people. Uh, I've picked three stories here that I think are so important and I think they highlight uh, the essence of Pomona College. Uh, so many of our students will do research with professors through our summer undergraduate research program, the SERP program, which funds students up to $5,000 for a summer research project. Uh, this year in pandemic times, we changed it to an online virtual research project, but many students still completed the RAISE program that we had and were given a stipend as well. And this is true in the, when you think about the staff and the faculty and the students and the community, it's largely in part due to the fact that so many faculty live near campus. 80% of our faculty live within five miles of campus. Campus. So that's why they're able to hold office hours. That's why they're able to attend your theater, uh, your theater, your um, theater programs and your sports uh, events. Uh, they're, they're part of the fabric. They're woven into the fabric of life. One fifth of our students are first generation. Half of our students study abroad uh, and about 55% of our students are on financial aid. We have a great student here. Um, this is Say Mfunya. Uh, she came into Pomona undecided. She's leaving as a visual art major. Uh, she really believes in the power of art and has found uh, visual art at Pomona and will move on to graduate school after Pomona and, and do work uh, in art. She wants to be a practicing artist, which is really exciting. And then I want to end uh, with a little shout out here uh, to our alum and Hilo High School alum. So shout out to those from Hilo, Jennifer Doudna, uh, who came to Pomona from Hilo High, uh, majored in uh, biochemistry at Pomona, went on to Harvard to get a PhD, and then moved to Berkeley where she set up a lab. And last Tuesday, uh, that lab and her work was awarded with a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Jennifer invented CRISPR. Uh, and so much of what she credits to her early academic life is that Pomona experience, that interdisciplinary learning that is true for all students. So I'll end there and I will turn it back over to the moderator and we'll move on to another school. Great. Thank you so much, Adam. Up next is Carleton College. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Rod Oto and uh, I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions at uh, Carleton. And I'll, I'm also the uh, Director of Student Financial Services. Uh, so let me share my screen. Um, and make sure I get this done right. There we go. Um, and there we go. Okay, so um, I've got a number of slides to show and I just, uh, here's my, my objective uh, for uh, students from Hawaii. Um, and by the way, I grew up in Hawaii. Uh, that was a long time ago, uh, but I still have family there. I get back uh, as, as often as I can. Um, and it's a long story as to how I got to uh, Minnesota. But uh, tonight, what I wanna do is to give you a sense of Carleton and also a sense of the culture there. Uh, because I think um, students from Hawaii coming to a place like Minnesota um, may seem pretty foreign, uh, but I think what you will find is that the, uh, the people here um, uh, have a share many qualities uh, uh, similar to those uh, in Hawaii. So, um, so we are in Northfield, Minnesota. A very quick glance at um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the college and um, 
about 2,000 students, uh, students from all over the country and the world. Um, I won't, much of this I'm not going to really, I'm going to glance, glance over because I think it's very similar to, to some of the other schools that are uh, present today. Um, uh, but more important is you get a sense of the campus by, uh, by some of these photos. Um, and uh, uh, Carl, Carl's, as, as we call our students, um, are often described as curious, friendly, inclusive, collaborative, hardworking, adventurous, relaxed. Um, descriptors that uh, I think uh, if you were to meet, meet some Carleton uh, graduates, you would, uh, you would agree with. Uh, we are in Minnesota. It is the middle of the country. It's, it's in the Midwest. Um, often uh, people refer to the Midwest as the heartland of America. And I think that uh, you would find, uh, actually, it's far away from, from Hawaii, but I think you would find it uh, very comfortable uh, once you got here. Uh, we are uh, in, this is a couple of scenes of downtown uh, Northfield. It's a historic town. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a story behind that. I won't go into it, but just know that it was the last, it's the site of the last attempted uh, bank robbery of the uh, Jesse James gang. Uh, 40 miles uh, from uh, the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, where you can, if you want to, uh, take advantage of all of the uh, activities um, of a large city. But Northfield, indeed, is a small town of about uh, 20,000 people. Um, academics, uh, uh, there's three terms. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, and there's uh, two courses that uh, students have in common when they get to, or two experiences. The, when you first get to Carleton, um, you uh, get into an A&I seminar, argument and inquiry, um, and uh, that starts your, your uh, academic program at, at Carleton. But then you end at, uh, with comps. Um, all seniors are expected to do a comprehensive project, and for many, many um, uh, students, that ends up to be a major paper uh, that they write with their, uh, with their advisor. Um, but the number three um, is uh, important at Carleton. So if you, if you leave this tonight or today um, with remembering anything, just remember the number three for Carleton. Um, because we have three terms, fall, winter, and spring. Each term is 10 weeks long. Um, and um, during each term, you take three classes. That's a full load um, at Carleton. So three terms, three courses each term. Um, and then during your time at, at Carleton, about a third of the courses are going to be distribution requirements. Um, they, they're going to include courses from all the major divisions of the college. They're going to include uh, courses that emphasize writing. We have a language proficiency um, that we want students to have. Um, and then about a third of your courses are going to be uh, in your major and then a third um, elective courses. Um, so in general, about 55 areas of study. You can design your own major if you want. And then of course we have special areas um, uh, to help students uh, uh, find a path to certain areas like medicine, law, engineering, uh, teaching, and so on. Often I'm asked, uh, what's the most popular majors at Carl uh, Carleton? And here's last year's graduating class list um, of uh, most popular major. And, and note that we, we use the word popular, we, we don't use the word best because the best major for you uh, may not necessarily be a large one, but it may be a great one. Um, so last year, computer science was a top major, biology, math, stats, uh, political science, international relations, and so on. Uh, so you see the list, um, and it involves uh, quite a number of areas. Um, campus life. Uh, uh, a lot of student-run organizations. So we do have varsity athletics, um, uh, music groups, even a college radio station, and so on. 
Um, and note for those um, from Hawaii, uh, the uh, snow scene uh, there as well. So, um, okay. Some of the other things I want to show you is that the um, uh, we have quirky um, activities, and I'm getting getting the high sign that I'm running out of time here, right? Uh, so uh, let me just quickly go through uh, one of the things that Carlton is known for is uh, ultimate frisbee. Uh, within in the years, we've taken ten national championships, um, and I um, I guess just to quickly go through the rest of these um, uh, uh, slides, just to give you some sense of uh, the culture. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out of time. And I, I really wanted to, I'm, uh, I didn't time this very well, but I wanted to give you a sense of the culture. Uh, and some of the culture is things like um, seniors blowing bubbles at opening convocation, Daisy Moses' house where you can go and bake uh, uh, cookies and then Friday flowers where you can buy uh, a flower for a friend who might have had a long week. So I think I'm gonna stop there. And uh, you have questions, certainly uh, address them to me and I'm, and I'm happy to um, uh, answer them. Uh, but at this point, we'll toss it over to somebody else. Great, thank you so much, Rod. And up next, we have Grinnell College. Hello, everyone. I'm gonna keep us in the Midwest and share my screen with you all. Um, like Owen said, my name is Sarah White. I'm the Senior Associate Director and Athletic Liaison at Grinnell College. Extraordinary journeys seldom begin in obvious places. I want to share with you about one of those places, Grinnell College. Now, I'm not gonna quiz you on your Iowa geography, but Grinnell is located in the heart of the Midwest. We like to think of ourselves as being conveniently located between the two coasts. That should make you smile. Campus is one hour from the Des Moines International Airport, no matter what day of the week, what time of the day. We do not have the traffic that you all get to experience on the H1. Grinnell is located, Grinnell College is located in the community of Grinnell which is about 10,000 members, and the college is located only a few blocks from the downtown district. Our student body is about 1,700 students, all undergraduates, which means all of your classes will be taught by a professor. When you need help, you'll actually go to the professor for help. And then we are also very fortunate that we have a $2 billion endowment, which makes a lot of things possible on our campus. Grinnell students find their way to campus from all over the world. Our classes are discussion-based, so we think it's important to have a variety of viewpoints represented. We have a unique curriculum called the Individually Advised, which means outside of the requirements for your major, you only have one required course called the First Year Tutorial, which is a welcome to Grinnell both academically and socially and it's taught the first semester you're on campus. Outside of your first year tutorial and the requirements for your major, everything else is looked upon as electives for you to pick and choose from. One of the main reasons that this curriculum style works is because of our very strong academic advising. At Grinnell, we have a three-pronged advising system. When students arrive on campus, they receive an academic advisor, a Center for Careers, Life and Service advisor, and a residence hall advisor. These advisors help guide and shape each student's individual Grinnell experience. At Grinnell, we recognize that learning takes place both in and outside of a typical classroom setting. Grinnell students work closely with the Center for Careers, Life and Service to discuss not only what life after Grinnell might look like, but what opportunities might they wanna take advantage of during their time at Grinnell? Some of those opportunities might be a funded internship or an industry tour. One of the best kept secrets is some of the best internships in the country they don't actually pay students to do. 
So if you do get one of those, you could apply for funding through Grinnell. Grinnell works hard to level the playing field for everyone. So everyone has access to all the out of classroom opportunities. While some students do choose to go directly to graduate school, others do enter the professional world right after Grinnell. And I know that for most of our students, one of our most popular questions is, what in the world is there to do in this small town in the middle of Iowa? Well, we stopped apologizing for our location long ago. We see the fact that we're in a small town in the middle of Iowa truly as an asset to your college experience. You're going to have the opportunity to be part of a robust intentional community. A typical year at Grinnell, there's over 100 different clubs and organizations, over 500 different campus events, and everything's free. We're Division Three in the Midwest Conference for Varsity Athletics, plus we offer a plethora of fine arts performances and activities that you can participate in, even if you're not a fine arts major. In addition, we strongly encourage our students to participate in off-campus study before they graduate. About 70% of our students do do that in a couple different ways. Um, we have the typical semester or year off campus, but we also offer some course embedded travel opportunities as well, and the college funds those. We also fund um, student research, and all of our students will do research while they're at Grinnell, and 55% of our students will actually get to design their own research project, conduct that research, it can be done anywhere in the world. And then we work with them to have the research presented in a professional setting. And again, we fund that opportunity. Now we're gonna get to everybody's favorite and I know we're moving quickly here, so bear with me. Um, admission and financial aid. At Grinnell, admission is holistic. We look at the student as the entire student. You are more than just your GPA and list of extracurricular activities. So we look at everything when we're reviewing applications for admission. We are a common application user. We do not have a supplement, nor do we have an application fee. In addition, we are need blind in admission for domestic students, which means you are admitted to Grinnell based off of your merit, not based off of your family's ability to pay. 86% of our students are receiving some type of financial aid. We also meet 100% of institutionally determined need, and we do offer merit scholarships. Our financial aid deadlines mirror our admission deadlines. And this year for the students who are applying for fall of 2021, we are test optional. So if you have not taken an exam or maybe you've taken the exam but don't feel it's a good um, indicator of your true ability, you do not have to have a test score to apply to Grinnell this year. Now, we know this process can be overwhelming at times, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and I would say that's true of any of my colleagues on this panel. We are here to help. Good luck with your college search. You will all find a wonderful place to attend next year. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sarah. Our next institution is Harvey Mudd College. Great, thank you, Owen. Hello, everyone. My name is Tira Briggs, and I'm the Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Harvey Mudd, and I as well will share my screen. Um, so what I want to talk a little bit about today is why we are called the Liberal Arts College of Engineering, Science, and Math. Um, you heard a little bit from, from Adam earlier about the Claremont Colleges, and yes, we are one of the Claremont Colleges, and founded in 1955, which, as Adam mentioned, is in the heart of the space race. So the idea was to have 
a, um, a school that will have high level math, science, and engineering, um, but in the context of a liberal arts education, and that is key to who we are. Um, one little admission tip today as you're considering different colleges, take a moment just to read the mission statement of each of the colleges you're considering. Someone somewhere when the college was founded spent some time trying to distill the values into one sentence and Harvey Mudd is an extremely mission driven institution. Um, and by that I mean that you can see everything you need to know about the college in this one sentence, the balance of high level math, science, engineering, but with um, a focus on the humanities, social sciences, and the arts. And again, that really key part at the end there, the impact of your work on society and understanding what that means. Um, we are the smallest of the Claremont Colleges at 900 undergraduates, and we are 50% female and 50% male, which we're very proud of and something you don't often see at technically oriented um, institutions. And we also have an eight to one student teacher ratio. So our curriculum actually struck me quite a bit when Rod was talking about um, Carlton, very similar, a third, a third, a third. So core curriculum, our major, uh, and their HSA, which is Humanities, Social Sciences, and the Arts. Um, but I did want to share what our core curriculum looks like because it looks quite different from many other places. I mentioned we are a, an in, uh, institution of math, science, and engineering. And this is what you would take as your part of your core curriculum, which is a three semester series um, during which you will study in every single department we offer. And we do that because at Harvey Mudd, unlike many technical institutions, um, you don't have to know what you want to study coming in because you're going to have until the end of your sophomore year to declare your major. Um, we do have a requirement that all students before they get to us have already taken a year of calculus, a year of chemistry, and a year of physics, because this allows our students to jump into this core curriculum, uh, where in your first semester you're taking special relativity, you're deriving calculus, all of these things become crucial to who we are um, as an institution. Um, I mentioned the majors, and again, this is something else that makes us very different from other high-level math, science, engineering institutions, is that we only offer majors in math, science, and engineering, very different from other liberal arts colleges. You'll see all 10 of our majors here as well, including those joint majors. The difference also is that our faculty voted a couple years ago you're actually not allowed to declare a major until the end of your first year. We're really serious about students coming in and having an open mind as they go through that core curriculum. Um, humanities, social sciences, and the arts, and I'm going to be honest, even though we are a STEM institution, this is often why students choose to come to Harvey Mudd, because they may love their work in the STEM fields, but they're not ready to give up all of the other things they want to study. And so we actually require that all students declare a concentration, just short of a minor, in some aspect of HSA. Um, that often tends to be economics as a popular one, music, but you can do any of the ones you see here or design your own. Uh, research is everywhere, and I think often people are concerned about how can a small liberal arts college compete with a larger university for research opportunities. This is where it matters that we're undergraduate. All of our faculty members are still doing research in their fields. If they were at a larger place, they'd be turning to their graduate students. Instead, they turn to our undergrads. Um, all students do a, uh, a senior program, capstone project of some sort, either a senior thesis or something we have called the clinic program where um, companies like the ones you see here, but also places like SpaceX and Disney, uh, Livermore National Labs, they pay Harvey Mudd each year to have our students in groups of four or five take on real life research problems for them. 10 to 12 patents come out of these projects every year and our students' names are on the patents. Company retains intellectual property, but it's an amazing experience for our students. This is really the core part of, of what matters at Harvey Mudd, a, a community of support, collaboration, and an honor code. So we are one of a handful of colleges to have a student run honor code. That means that most of our exams, if not all of them are unproctored. So literally a professor will hand you or send you an exam, tell you how long you have to take it, what resources you can use. You could all be sitting in one room taking the same exam or different exams. It means we have extremely strong sense of community. Harvey Mudd is not a competitive place. It is a very supportive place um, and one where collaboration is key. Um, the outcomes for Harvey Mudd are fairly extraordinary, um, as you might imagine in some ways. You see our median sal starting salary there is $107,500 for the class of 2019. We did just learn um, yesterday, in fact, that uh, the, for the class of 2020, that number is actually $112,500. Um, and typically, we are at or near uh, the, hot, the top of the list for liberal arts colleges producing the hard, highest percentage of students going on to get their PhDs. Um, and also, we are consistently at or near the top of that, um, the list for the colleges with the highest return on investment. Um, and we think our students do so well after graduating, not just because they're math, science, and engineering, but also because they know how to write, they know how to communicate, they know how to work across, across disciplines, and they know how to collaborate. Um, the only thing I'll highlight for admission and financial aid 
um, is that we do require two recommendations, one from a, a math or science teacher and the other from a humanities, social sciences or arts teacher, right back to our mission and that idea of balance. Um, we do have two rounds of early decision. And then for financial aid, we are also, um, like others you've heard here today, we are also need blind in the, um, for all of our domestic students and permanent residents, guarantee will meet 100% of demonstrated need. Um, and we both have, we have both need-based and merit-based aid available. Um, so with that, I will turn it back over to Owen and you can hear more about our sister college, Fitzer College. Great, thank you so much. We have one institution remaining. So just a reminder, if you do have any questions about specific institutions you've heard of, use the Q&A feature or broader ones for all of our panelists and we'll address those as soon as we hear from Pitzer College. Hello everyone, thank you for sticking with us. My name is Yvonne Garuman. I am the Vice President of Mission and Financial Aid at Pitzer College. And I'm going to share my screen as well. So give me one second. Okay, that's me and I'll show some information in terms of how to contact me if you do have any other questions. All right. So first and foremost, as uh, Tiara had mentioned, it's very important that you understand the school and you look specifically at, um, you look specifically at the, oh, no, it doesn't seem to want to go. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So you look specifically at the mission statement to understand what the institution is like. So first and foremost for Pitzer, we were founded in 1963, as Adam mentioned, we are a member of the Claremont Colleges, and we produce engaged, socially responsible citizens of the world through an academically rigorous interdisciplinary liberal arts education, through social justice, interculture understanding, and environmental sensitivity. Now, the five core values that you see below are really embedded in the day-to-day -day life of students at Pitzer. We want to make sure that our students are thinking about these things. And so in many cases, when you see our name, you'll see Pitzer College, you'll see a tree. And in that tree, you'll also notice it'll say provide us for Tory or mindful of the future. And this is again, for us, it means again, uh, mindful of the future. Your education is not just for yourself, but for the benefit of others. And so these core values are part of who we are. You'll see our campus, and I don't know if you can, can tell very much, but the landscaping is a little different. Um, and this is all part of our inter, um, part of our objective in terms of being environmentally sustainable. You'll see um, landscaping there in which um, we really try to make sure it's native to the land. So we feature solar panels, a great water system, smart air conditioning, green roofs, and again, drought resistant native plants, because again, California is actually a drought state. So we want to make sure that um, our students are mindful of the energy and our resources. Another very important um, core value that I want to be able to stress is that we are um, very interdisciplinary. And so just like many other institutions, we offer you a variety of different majors. We have about 40 different majors. And um, we also offer you the option of designing your own major. So that's one of the options as well that's um, unique to Pitzer. In addition to that, our curriculum is actually very open and flexible. So students can take a variety of different classes throughout their four years. We only ask that they take one first year seminar um, at the beginning of their studies. Here you'll see some of the other four um, core values and some of the things that students are able to do. Another value that I will mention that we do stress is social responsibility. That is something, again, coming from the 1960s, our students are very, very engaged socially and politically. So one of the classes that students are able to take, or actually several classes, are what's called inside out courses. So students actually have the opportunity to take courses inside a central jail. Now these courses are actually all Claremont College instructed. And so we have faculty from the Claremont Colleges that take 10 to 15 college students from the Claremonts, about 20 minutes east of Claremont. And the students will take those courses with 10 to 15 inmates at a local jail, which is very, very different. And Pitzer was the lead college in creating this. The idea for us is rehabilitation over further incarceration. So the students that take these classes actually get to interact and um, share perspectives with many of the inmates that are actually going to be released in a very short amount of time. And again, we want to make sure that they have something to look forward to. So all the classes that they actually take, they actually get Pitzer College credit in which they can transfer those credits to another four-year institution, Pitzer or another school. 
So it's how our students can begin to engage themselves in social responsibility as um, college students. And again, student engagement is very much a part of who we are. You see it within our, our campus politics. Our students are very involved in student senate. We have one of the most active um, senates in the country. And they actually help to make Pittsburgh the first school on the West Coast to divest from fossil fuels, which again shows the interaction there. In our culture understanding, over 50% of our students study abroad. We do strongly believe that our students learn about a culture outside of their own. So that's one way they are actually able to do that. As far as what our campus looks like, um, you'll see that many of our students are able to come to Pistar and get involved in a variety of different subjects. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, let's see, admissions as well. Um, our students are able to get involved in a variety of different subjects from um, the sciences to the humanities and fine arts. And in addition to that, they are able to get involved in athletics um, and, as well as the performing arts. As far as admissions, the one thing I'll highlight, we've all talked a little bit about the fact that we receive the, the common application. And in addition to that, we have early decision for Pitzer, early decision one and two. We also do holistic reading. And in addition to that, um, one unique thing about Pitzer is we've actually been a test optional school since 2006. I'm sorry, 2003. So we have over 16 years of reading students without SAT scores. So if that is a consideration for you, please keep us in mind. We are looking for students that are generally going to um, be able to contribute to our core values in some way, shape or form. If you have been a student that's been actively involved in school, want to continue to be active and actively involved in a community, then this is a great place for you. Some of the photos that you see here show a little bit about the sustainability and the art and the personality of the campus. We really do try to make sure that our campus is a place where students feel completely a part of because, again, they are there to continue to, to construct what the history of the college will actually look like. And again, I'll showcase a little bit about the Claremont Colleges. We are so close together. So one of the beauties of actually being part of this consortium is the fact that you can actually take classes at all the different colleges. And so the, the beauty of Pitzer as well as the Claremont, just to close it out in terms of what we offer is the fact that students can take classes at all the different schools and it only continues to augment um, what the Claremonts are able to offer each and every student as far as courses, as far as variety. Um, so for that, I'm just gonna leave it there and then turn it back over to Owen. Thank you so much. We have just a few moments remaining, um, so we'll bring all of our, our college representatives back and um, do a quick little Q&A. We had a great question submitted and we'll kind of combine them into one. Um, in the order of your initial presentations, if you wouldn't mind sharing if you are currently hosting campus visitors, um, as well as if you have fly-in programs, a student was particularly interested in, but then also just more generally whether you're having visitors right now or not, at, at some point students will be able to return to your institution and, and when they do, what's that, that one place on campus that they just need to see? Where can they not leave campus without stopping by? I guess that means I'm first. Um, Reed is currently hosting very limited in-person visits. Um, you and a single guest get a, a, a personalized tour experience. Um, on the daily. Um, we do generally host fly-ins, but I think whether or not we will offer them uh, next year will be highly dependent on conditions on the ground. Um, and when you make it to campus, um, I may be repeating myself, but the Reed Canyon is the must-see. Um, it's a beautiful oasis in the center of the city, a spring that flows into a lake that is actually the only place in the uh, Portland city limits where salmon still spawn. Wow, that's, that's great. Uh, it's almost hard to beat there, Grace. Um, I love this. Uh, my answers will be pretty quick. We have no visitors. Pomona is closed. We've already completed our virtual fly-in program for this year, our POP Perspectives on Pomona program. I'm with Grace at Pomona as well. If we'll be dependent upon situation on the ground, but we have been able to make a successful virtual program. If we have to do one next year, we will. If not, if we're able to have one on campus, we'll do that as well. Uh, and then we, when you can visit um, in the future, uh, I would hit up Marston Quad. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's this really beautiful green space with lots of big trees and uh, students, take classes on it, they sunbathe on it, they 
walk uh, their pets on it. Um, it's just a collective gathering space on campus. It's really nice to, to be in. Um, at uh, at Carlton, we are in session. Uh, most of our students are on campus right now, um, and uh, we're doing well. Uh, we're still hopeful that we can remain uh, in uh, on campus uh, for the rest of the term and for the winter. Um, we, it, however, we are not entertaining any visitors um, uh, in admissions at this point uh, because obviously we want to keep that bubble. Uh, at Carleton as, um, as, as safe as possible. Our hope is that by the time uh, admitted student uh, 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 days uh, arrive uh, for those students who are admitted uh, to Carleton that we might have some actually on campus visits, uh, but we'll have to see. Um, the spot I would say, um, there are actually two spots, but the one spot I would say um, that students should go to uh, when they visit Carleton is our Arboretum. Um, it's 800 acres, it's huge, um, and um, uh, a lot of students literally uh, go in there and, and figuratively get lost in there. They don't really get lost, but um, you can really um, have a, a very nice uh, uh, quiet time uh, by, uh, by yourself or uh, take a hike with, with friends. Similar to the other schools, Grinnell is not currently open for visitors. We're monitoring public health like everybody else. Uh, we, when we have visitors, we have a fly-in program. We have a virtual one right now. Quickly where I'd tell you to stop by is the Joe Rosenfield Center. Um, it's our student center. It's a great hangout space. Thanks. Um, so yes, we are. We have we have no students on campus um, at the moment. We have no visitors uh, or who are allowed on campus either. We are hoping for that to happen. We've had three virtual fly-in programs already this uh, this fall. Um, and the place I would suggest that students visit is actually something we have called the Quiet Place, which is a Zen garden in the corner of our campus, where I think students really like to find a place to retreat. Similar to my colleagues from the other Claremonts, we are also closed, unfortunately, so our students aren't able to be on campus. Um, we are offering live um, tours, uh, virtual tours, so you can actually log on to our website and actually find those as well as live information sessions done by our students, as well as interviews and our virtual lobby, all hosted by our students, um, which again goes back to our student engagement piece. Um, we have already had our flying program. We will have one in the spring for our admitted students. And as far as a place to be on campus, it's the Grove House. If you haven't been there, you absolutely have to go and have some cookies. It is infamous amongst our alumni in terms of the absolutely best cookies. So um, that is definitely, and then we also have chickens. And so the cookies, the chickens, <laughs> as well as the garden in the back are a great place to go. Excellent. Great. Sounds like some great spots on campus. Well, thank you to everyone for joining us and thank you to our panelists for giving up part of their afternoon to share your stories as well. When this webinar ends, you'll be um, prompted with a brief four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you could provide. Also, just a reminder that a recording of this session as well as all others will be available on the same website where you registered within about a week's time. And please be sure to register for a session in the next block as well. Thanks so much and have a great afternoon.